Maître des blocs strikes once again. Hello, YouTube! This is Maître des blocs, and today we're going to continue our Minecraft Let's Play. You know, when I started building this map here, when I thought it was a good idea, I should have known that I was on a tiny island and that most of it would have been blue. <laughs> if I knew that, I wouldn't have made it this big, considering just a 4x4 four four, I think would have done it. Anyways, welcome back guys to the Let's Play world. Wow, that was weird, the way I landed into the path blocks, like completely stopped me from walking for a minute. Interesting. Anyways, we are going to start this episode by working on a project. I have something in mind. Something that we didn't work on in quite a while. Something that caused us so much problem that we spent so much time into. Our bane of existence. The project that we hated the most. The project that caused us so much frustration. So, so Yes. The Zombie Complex. Yes, indeed. Some of you probably guessed it, and a lot of you probably didn't, because this project is something that I really didn't work on for a lot of episodes, so some of you new guys might not even know the existence of this project, and for those of you, I'm going to explain what this is. This is a zombie spawner that is right next to, to my mind's rail. And I discovered this one of the first things into my world in episode 3. And since then I've had this idea to try to do every single thing that is possible to be done with zombies into one big machine with this spawner. So I have two buttons here and I forgot what they do. One of them will shut the lights off completely, and the other will just shut them off half. I think this one is... Oh, whoops. Wrong button. Not that one. This one. That shuts the lights off if they're on, and on if they're off. So that's what that does, and this changes the mode. So right now the mode is completely off, and this is half off. Let me do this again. As you can see, zombies can spawn, but a lot less zombies can spawn. And this way I'm able to control the spawn rates, and the change only applies the next time you put it off. So that's pretty cool, I can control it with that. Then all the zombies go into a crazy thing I have, they go down here in this water stream, go through the signs, go up there in an elevator that goes into the back here. And this is where the craziness starts happening. There, right now I have a killing thing for the baby zombies that just get killed into lava. And for the adults, if I can get around, they are right now going into this stream over here, which has a switch. This is just like a... A uh, water dispenser that can either lead them into lava if I do that or they keep them and they, they will continue on their way and they go down here into this stream into another elevator and this leads them to my holding chambers and the reason why I have holding chambers and those are inventors uh, design for the holding chambers they just go into holding cells here. If I see a zombie villager, I keep him. And if I see other zombies, I kill them. Manually. One by one. And this is how I sort these guys. And then, in the past, I had this system in which when I had just zombie villagers left, and I had like eight of them, I would just jump up, flick this lever, and all the zombie villagers would walk because they see a villager that's down there and they go into my purifying chamber. This doesn't work anymore though because now zombies actually prefer the player to villagers and they can switch targets at any time to the closest target. So 
if I do this, when a lot of zombie villagers are here, they're going to go for the villager for one second, and then they're going to see me, and they're all going to try to attack me. So this system is not working, and I didn't like it in the first place, really, because it's so unpractical and so tedious to have to go kill all the ones that are not zombie villagers. We need a better system than this. We need a better system to sort the zombie villagers from the zombie. And I had an idea for it that I want to experiment. But first, we need to tear all this down. So I'm going probably to just remove all of this redstone and just scavenge all of these blocks and just fill this all up. And then we're going to see what's going to be the new sorting system. All right, a couple changes have happened. I filled in all this area. Well, not really. I put a wall to it, actually. But it's blocked in, so I don't have to worry about this being interfering with the room. The only reason why I left it open, and I just realized I missed a block right there, that's probably a ghost block that was there before. But I left this open in case I want to add something here later, put another room here or something. Just to... just... why not? I don't need to close it for any reason, and I don't want to have to dig this again if I want to build something here, so I left it all open because of that. And I also reformatted the water streams over here. This water stream here was going this way into an elevator that was going into all the chambers. But now it goes this way instead, and it ends up to be right here. This is the end of the water stream, and this is where all the zombies are going to go. I'm going to have glass right here on this block, just like so. And so what's going to happen is that the zombies are going to be stopped by the glass, and the one zombie is going to be sitting on that stone. Well, it's not going to be stone, but right now it's stone block over here. The next zombie that's going to come is going to be pushed by him and just hang around here. The next one is going to be here. The next one is going to be here and so on. They're just going to accumulate into this tunnel over here until this point. And the new zombies are going to come, are going to fall in and mix in with the ones over here. But I'm not going to let it um, backtrack all the way over here. I'm going to deal with the zombies before it fills up to that point. But my plan for the zombies is to use piston translocation to sort them now. Instead of having multiple chambers with all the zombies to decide which ones to kill and which ones to keep alive, I'm going to use the simple trick of piston translocation to deal with them. Let me try to show. So the trick here is that in 1.9 and 1.10, I don't know if they're going to correct it in 1.11, but in these two versions it still works. When a piston head gets into an entity like this, the next time the piston is going to retract, the block 36 is going to glitch the entity right through the block. And this is how it goes. Let me flip it. Come on! There we go. I glitch right through the piston. And this way I'm able to get basically right through blocks. And I'm here. You see, there is no opening here. I just got here by the piston translocation. And by using this, I'm going to have two pistons. One that is going to be above the zombie, and the other is going to be where the zombie is standing. And two monostable circuits hooked up to those pistons by buttons. If the zombie is a zombie villager, right here is a tube that leads him... I don't need that trapdoor anymore. Right there is a tube that leads him to the zombie room, and I think that tripwire just activated because of my trapdoor. Well, let's not bother about that. <laughs> but if I activate the piston below the zombie, it should just glitch him right into there. So if it's a zombie villager, I activate the bottom one, and it'll go into that room. If it's a zombie, I activate the top one, and it'll go into a room with two lava blocks that's just going to kill him and burn the items. So that is how I'm going to sort the zombies from now on. So all I have to do is to AFK, listen to some good music right here. And I think... Actually, can I activate the spawner from over there? I cannot. As you can see, the zombie spawner will only be activated when the flames are active. So if I move right over here, this is out of range. This is in range. 
This is out of range. So I'll actually have to AFK here, wait for a couple zombies to go, and then I can move to the other room and check them and press the buttons one by one as they go down the tunnel over here. And when the first one is going to be sorted, the next one is going to take its place. I can sort him, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. And it should be a lot cleaner, a lot more compact, and a lot more efficient than my previous design. So I'm going to build the piston contraption, the monostable circuits, hook up the buttons, make this more pretty, put the glass, and I'll see you in a bit. Next. Oh, you're one of the guys I'm looking for. You go down. Next. 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 And next. And I think that's all the guys that there are in there. Pretty, pretty cool. We now got, I think, three or even four zombie villagers down there. That's pretty good. This is a machine I made. This is a couple days later. I have been working on this for quite a while, and it's not that it took me that long to make this machine, but just a whole bunch of stuff happening in the meantime of the making of this video, delaying the progress of this project, but I would say this is going pretty well. I did exactly my, what my plan was. I rearranged the water stream over here so it stops right at the block right there, so that all the zombies will go to that piston over there. They seem to accumulate in groups of two, which is not exactly needed, or wanted because that makes it so if a zombie is with a zombie villager I don't want to bring zombies here that is not good so it makes it so that I lose the zombie villagers because I have to bring them into the lava up there but I have two sets of pistons here this button is rigged up to that piston which makes just a small pulse pulling a zombie through it and into the lava above and this is the same for below pulling a zombie through and it falls with the guys below and this is the redstone I got for it. This button here, I'll start with how that's connected to the piston here. So this button is connected to the redstone here, which is not going into that repeater there because it doesn't go through in the side. That redstone goes here and then it goes around into this repeater through the block. And then this repeater sends signal at this piston and also through this line of redstone here, which goes with this repeater and ends up with a piston. And what this machine does here is that this repeater powers the piston and the redstone there at the same time. The piston extends, cutting the signal going through to this redstone because this block will be up in the same tick as the signal goes. So it's a one tick pulse it creates, and that's called a monostable circuit, by the way. Uh, a really small and compact version that is able to be done these days either with a gravel block and a regular piston or with a sticky piston and a block above both do work and that's making a monostable circuit signal one tick signal go through that piston same thing i got above here except the signal of the button is here i think is here actually hmm i don't i don't remember where my button is oh it's here this is where it is so it goes here up through this to the monostable circuit and then this goes in here goes up and then down back down through that piston and this is where it goes to that piston over there i hope that was clear <laughs> i got a whole bunch more wiring down there that i probably won't be able to explain i don't think actually this is not that bad this is going to the lever because the way i set this up right now is that since i had this problem when I had zombie villagers going down into the curing chamber, because this minecart... Actually, you know what? I didn't even explain the minecart part yet. I have a button here that when I press this, it sends a minecart, and then I would be in it, AFKing. And it starts this timer here. This timer will send the minecart back in a little while. But in the meantime, we'll be here activating the spawner, making more zombies spawn. And the only reason why I had to do this, I'll shut off the spawner for now. There we go. Is because I'm not able to be in range of the spawner and able to interact with this in the same time, just because of the ways I put this. And I could move this closer to the spawner, but that would be just a big pain and a lot of work. 
so I just want to wait, make it work with the way it is. So it just goes to a small system over here, etho clock, basically this is a etho hopper clock, and a monostable circuit there that is powering that, letting the micro go back after the time is done, and it's all activated by this um, detector rail over here. So that's how that part works. And the reason why I have a button, uh, not a button, a lever here, is because when I'm over there, the zombies that are here, that before were going into the curing chamber, were despawning down there before I could go and cure them. So to solve that issue, I had to make them stay in a place that I would be able to be there without them despawning. And I had to make them be held into this place over here. When I have as many as I need, I can just pull this. Oh, as I can see, more, more zombies are coming. You can go up. You can go up. You can go up. And I hope no more will come. But when you have enough zombie villagers over here, what you do, you pull the lever, and they all go down into the curing chamber. There we go. And then I can just go down here and meet them right there. And they should be all floating about. Yup. All the zombie villagers are there. They're so easy to be noticed in 1.9 and above because they don't have the blue uh, costume that all other zombies have. So that's a lot easier for me to notice them now because of that uh, among the other zombies. And as you can see, my cow is not getting hurt. Before I had the system in which the snow golem was firing a snowball when he was seeing the zombies over here to the cow, making the cow jump into tripwire constantly, signaling the machine that zombies are in here and this light would turn on for it. But right now this doesn't work, even though you can see in my subtitles that the snow golem actually shoots snowballs. And the reason is that there is a bug for this that has been fixed for 1.11, in which snowballs and other projectiles do not damage mobs in the first two ticks that the snowball or the other projectile has been created, which means that I have to move the snow golem back for this system to still work. And I will do that change. Another change that I wanted to do is a zombie villager counter. Since I don't have any way of knowing how many zombie villagers I have ready to be held and cured into this chamber over here, I wanted to try to implement some counter. And I have an idea for that, I just need to go get some stuff ready and start working on the mechanics for this. For this counter function, I'll use a block that is not used in redstone systems many times these days. It is something that a lot of people even forget about that can be used in any redstone contraption. Gold and iron pressure plates, also called, if I'm not mistaken, I even forgot the name of this. Uh, what's the name? Weighted pressure plates, there we go. This is a light version and there's also a heavy version. And these also, first of all, they do act as any pressure plate would act, powering everything when something steps on it. And it's just like a wooden pressure plate in which items and players will activate it when they step on it, and it just looks really cool and blends in with some things that the other pressure plates do not blend into. But, if I put some redstone next to it, you will clearly see there is a function that other pressure plates do not have. It sends a one, one redstone signal strength signal through this redstone line. And you might be thinking, is that all it does? Well, no. The signal strength is dependent on how many items or how many entities are onto this pressure plate. So if I throw some stone, I put one stone on there. I put, oh, that won't work. I can throw actually a stack if I want. Oh, actually it does? Oh, no, it doesn't. Because if I throw 64 on this, it only lights up one. That's because in recent Minecraft versions, I think since like beta 1.8 or maybe more recent than that, I forgot which version they added it to it. Maybe it's like 1.2 or something. Items do stack when you drop them on the ground if they're the same type of item. And that makes them count like one single entity. So that's why that doesn't work. But if I take many block types, like for example stone, stone bricks, pistons, and stake, let's just take these, and I throw them onto this, that's one. Oh, okay, well, that would be two. Three. And there we go. The piston is powered. Three. That was all that needed to be 
put onto there to power the piston. Wait, no, I think it was three items I had on there. One, two. Does it count per one item? Yeah, it counts every single item for one signal strength. I thought it was counting per four, but I think that's what the other pressure plate does. The heavy version, I think that's what the one that does per four. So let me just test. I really didn't play with these often. This is like the first time I'm using them into a project. So I'm kind of doing some experiments right now. Let's see, I can put four items onto this, I think, before it'll go to the next one. Two, three, and four. Four doesn't do anything. But if I put a fifth one, a fifth one still doesn't do anything? How many items do I need to put into there? What? I was sure it wasn't this many. Still not enough. Still not enough. Oh, there we go. It went to two for one second and then went back to one. Ha! What the heck? There we go, it goes to two. But man, that's a lot of objects that I need to put on there for that to go up one. So I think I'll use the other one to count the zombies. So every single zombie that's stepping on this will be adding a signal to this. And I can rig this up that up to 15 zombies can be detected with this because signal strength can go up to 15. And then light up a lamp on the way which will indicate me, like with an indicator light, that it has the amount of zombies that I want for one batch. And I think I'll go with 15 zombies for that because when I want to come here and cure zombies... Oh, I just blew up my pressure plate. I don't have more gold. That is great. I didn't know that you needed a pick to harvest these, but I guess that makes sense because it's just like the um, stone pressure plates, but I was stupid and I just blew it up. But... I think I will rig a lamp with a pressure plate there to detect up to 15 zombies being held in one single spot here and then I'll send that bash down when I have that many. The problem is this won't work the way I thought it would because if I put a pressure plate right there, when all the zombies are on there, if I make the floor go away, the pressure plate will just pop off because that's the problem why people don't use these for mob systems. Because when you want to transport the mobs to a new place, you usually want to remove the floor below them. But you can't if you have a pressure plate where they're standing. So what I think I'll do is I'll use piston translocation with two pistons behind, the right there, two pistons where I'm pointing at, facing me, that I will power and make the zombies go through the wall, and then they'll go down. And that's how I'll be able to move them. But now that I'm thinking of it, that won't work either. Because a piston can't push where the pressure plate is. So I'll, so I'll think I have to leave one air block right there and one piston there that will pull the zombies through the wall and in, into a water stream. And you'll know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about when I'll, you'll see it. I'll show you when I have some of the system going. I'll push a pressure plate there, move the golem back down so the snowballs actually shoot the mushroom. And we'll try the system again with the changes. Finally! Finally! Oh, poop. Wait, is there a regular zombie in there? I think I just saw a regular zombie in there. That's bad! Well, I finally got 15 zombie villagers to stand in here, and I think there's a regular zombie in there. I'm kind of tempted to try to kill it. Because that won't be good. But if I break this block, I won't be able to place it again. Yeah, that's definitely a regular zombie. Ah, uh, well, I'll probably have to separate him from the guys down there. Well, let's just say there are 15 zombie villagers. Probably there are 14 and one regular zombie. The system still has to be perfectionated a little bit. Because right now, as it is, regular zombies manage to get through with the zombie villagers pretty well. Because they get into the same one by one right there. And the only reason for that is because the space here is large enough for two zombie hitboxes to sit next to each other. And that is a problem. I could fix it by putting another trapdoor right here. I put these specifically because a player can walk through this. Let me show. Zombies can too. Wait. 
There we go. I can't fit here. I can't move left or right. I'm kind of stuck here. And this way, no zombie will be able to go into the same spot as another zombie. They will all go into a line. But the problem is this spot here is an exception. One zombie gets there, gets pushed to the right. Another zombie goes left of that. And two zombies can coexist into that spot. Which is making it so if I see a zombie villager and I activate this thing to put them below, it'll pull another zombie through with them. And to fix that, I could put a trapdoor over here, but then the pistons would clash with each other because this could not extend because this trapdoor would be pushing into this trapdoor, which would be pushing into this piston. So I don't exactly know how to fix this issue for the moment, but I'll find, I'll find something eventually. I also... Uh, what else did I do? I changed some redstone wiring in the back to fit with the trapdoors. I changed the water streams over here to make it so because there was a little... Um, it was getting clogged up over here and all the zombies were getting stuck into this corner and could not go into the tunnel here. So I rearranged the water stream to try to fix that issue and that seemed to work. And I think that's pretty much all the changes that I did over here except I AFK'd a whole bunch to get all of these zombies, so let's test this thing out. You, zombies, you go below. Go! No! <laughs> test number two. What? And test number three. Yes! Oh my gosh. Let's go down below. Oh no. You're not supposed to be there. They just fell straight through the water! They're supposed to accumulate into this chamber. Well, we have the golden apples. Do we have... I don't want to have wasted all of this time. Do we have... Yes, we have a potion of weakness. This is not all wasted. Um, I want that back. Thank you. I'm not technically supposed to access the dispenser. Yeah, let's now put this like that. And I guess let's go below because we'll have to do this in a really strange way. I don't know why that went like it did. And all the zombie villagers are below. Yeah, they're all in there. They're all in there. And there's still like the one zombie inside of that. Well, I know what we can do. Um... Oh no, and you two converted! I think a baby zombie villager went down here somehow and killed those two. Why is everything going wrong? Oh, I need to have them all into a one by one with water. Hmm. Well, this won't work. <laughs> um, hmm, I'll try something here. This might be a waste, but I'll try something. Okay. Hello. Can I kill you, zombie? The one zombie that is not a zombie villager. Oh my gosh, this will be a beautiful thumbnail. <laughs> there are two. You're a zombie. And you're a zombie. Okay, and now we got a whole bunch of zombie villagers. Let's splash them with this. Okay, and let's do this. Oh my gosh, this is madness. Alright, we got a whole bunch of them taking a bath together and curing, but they're all concentrating on me. So I think if one of them cures in the middle, they shouldn't all go after it because they're all focusing on me right now. Let's pray and hope. A 
Excelente! We got a whole bunch of villagers all cured up in here. I think there are exactly 15, if I'm not mistaken, because we got 13 new ones. And we had the old two farmers that were here that got converted again to zombie villagers and we had to re-cure them. And yeah, we got 15 villagers here. I blocked it off and I surrounded the place. So hopefully these guys won't get attacked and turned into zombie villagers anytime soon. Let's go back up. I just realized with using this, what a horrible and stupid mistake that I did. Well, it's not horrible, but it's stupid. If I go down here, this is why all the zombie villagers fell through. This thing was open. Because I forgot to click the button last time I used it to make it be ready again for new guys to come. Because of the RS Norlash that is here. This thing. It does not activate when zombies go in the tripwire if I didn't reset it. And I only can reset it manually down there. So that is why that didn't work. But I didn't use the system in a while so I forgot about that function. I should really label my buttons someday. But I want to work a little bit on this system here because this, as you know, with the fact that two zombies were down there with the other zombie villagers, proved that some zombies can still get through. And I have an idea on how to stop that. Back there, instead of putting the trap doors on the two sides, I think that what I'll do... Can I get in here? Thank you. Right here, I think either right here or here, I'll put one single trapdoor instead of having all of the ones I have on both sides here and the redstone and a whole bunch of things. It just doesn't even look good in the first place. It's not clean and it's not smooth. This is what I want to try to do. I've seen this design in Impulse SV's uh, automatic XP farm that was patched now. And the way he controlled that the zombies were getting in the room one at a time was with this system. And I have to rig up a trapdoor like this to a monostable circuit so it sends a one tick pulse that when a zombie is against this and there are like other back in the line, it would open and close. Oh, wrong side. It would open and close really quick like that. Oh, well, I glitched through for some reason. But like, just like that, so zombie is able to walk through it and continue walking until it reaches the player over here. And I think unless the system is very, very clogged up, that should be enough to let one single zombie go at a time and get into the place right there. And what I would like to do is to hook up this monostable circuit here on these buttons here. So every time I press one of these, it would activate that with a monostable circuit. And as soon as one zombie is processed, the next one will be walking and ready to be processed as well. So I want to try to implement that system into the sorter here. And I did it! I did it and it works pretty well. I am pretty satisfied with how this went. This is perfect. It only lets one single zombie through and I've tested it for like a while. It seems to be completely consistent. I also rearranged the panel over here. And by the way, I feel like I never explained why the glass is missing. Because these zombies can track me, and that's how they make their way to me. They see me, and they come here, and I, that way I don't need the water coming all the way here for this system, for example. And because this is one and a half block high, they can't fit into this spot here. And they can't either because there's also this there. But that's just to prevent them... Actually, you know what? I don't even need this. I don't even need that because the trapdoor is preventing them from coming. That's completely obsolete. I could just replace that with glass because zombies can't fit into that gap. Anyways, I'm talking a lot here. So what I do is I press the sort zombie button to start it because this will open the trap door. Both of these buttons are connected to that with a monostable circuit. Any of these buttons pressed will open and close that really quick, letting one single zombie come through. So I'll test that in a second. And I also put the labels all here, return to spawner, process villagers. So that will put all the villagers down with that pissing over there, just like this. It does that. And these two are connected, so let's try it out. One single zombie came through. You're a zombie. That opens up the gate for a new one. Zombie. And every single time I press this, a new one follows. And it's just a constant procession of zombies. Isn't this so cool? 
It's just so clean and easy. The interface, I, I love it. I love it. This is a perfect system for what we're trying to do. And all of that will be ruined because in 1.11, zombie spawners don't spawn zombie villagers anymore. <laughs> I just have to say it. It's something I saw in the news a couple uh, days ago for 1.11. that they, They're going to fix a bug in which zombies and zombie villagers are mistaken to be the same entity and blah blah blah. I'm not a fan of this whole thing uh, because so many people have zombie villager uh, curing stations with zombie spawners. I don't, I don't think I'm going to update to 1.11 with what I see they're going to change for the moment, but it might, my opinion might change if they put really good things into the update. I also did these things. I also put labels to these buttons, as I said I would do, with item frames with buttons inside of them. Like if I remove this, you'll see. Like, there we go. There's a button inside of that. And the reason why I'm putting a button, oh, I can't pick that up, is because it's so small that the button that is on top of it actually hides it. So that is how I have the modes there. But this episode is getting pretty long, so I think we're going to head back to the top of our home island and end this right now. Hey, it has been a while since you saw that, eh? I think, like, around episodes 10-ish, like episode 13 or 14, I first introduced that MDB's Minecraft news, or actually I think it was like episode like 2 or 3. I don't remember, my memory from that time is starting to go away. But it's something that I did uh, early on in the series, to talk about news of the channel, news of the series, and I just stopped doing that format, or using that intro even, but I saved it in case one day I would use it again. I think we're going to reintroduce that into the series with what we have to talk about today as we fish. And look at this beautiful iron trap door so close that we see the pixels. Every single pixel. There. I shifted. Oh, ah! There. Th this fishing farm is glitchy for some reason. At least a fishing rod never breaks when I use it. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, we, I have to talk about some news uh, about uh, life, about the series, about my time, and about what's coming. So, as you guys might know, judging by the title of this video and by what I said in the video, we are episode 48 of the series. And early on in the Let's Play, I said I wanted to get to episode 100 at least. I saw other YouTubers do series where they did hundreds of episodes, and I wanted to try to do something that was going to go to 100 episodes. Any sort of series. And I decided to do a Let's Play, like I saw Etho do, like I saw a lot of other people I follow do. And that's what I decided to do with this series. And since then, I've been slowly and surely getting to 100. So far, it's going good. And now we're about to get to halfway. Episode 50 is coming very soon, and I want to do some kind of special or something out of the ordinary for that episode. And I've been thinking for a while of what that could be. And the thing that stuck to my mind the most is a world tour. For a lot of you guys that are new, because when I started the series, I had zero subscribers, actually. I think maybe two. I think I got two from the King's Quest series I did before. Before I did this series, and the two are people I know. Don't, don't judge me, but... Um, uh, because it's because at that time no one's really watching me. But now I have, at the time that I'm making this, 324. And that's a lot. And probably a lot of you guys didn't even see my whole world. So I've been thinking, it's a good time to think about a world tour. And I don't have that much to show, I don't have that many... Uh, constructions to show, which is why I avoided so far doing a world tour, but if it's 20 minutes, where's the deal? Where's the problem? It would be fine a world tour of 20 minutes. People don't have that much time to watch YouTube videos these days anyways, it seems, so 20 minutes seems fine for me if that's what it is, and I want to show what I have into my world, what I built so far. Just take a tour around, that would be a relaxing and fun episode to watch. And to make, I think. So that's what I think I'm going to do for my 50th episode. Another thing I wanted to address is that I'm getting busier with real life things recently. And that might affect my uploading schedule of these videos. So I don't post as many. I might not post like I do now one episode a week forever. I might go on a hiatus 
after the 50th episode if I need. But so far, it seems like I can keep going for the moment. But if things get busier, I might need to stop uploading these videos for a little while. And the reason why that is not affecting my other videos, why I can still post other videos of other things, even though this I would have to stop, is because this takes an immense amount of time to make a single episode compared to any other series I'm doing. King's Quest takes 20 minutes to record and like 2-3 minutes to edit. I just need to put the intro, the outro, and it's done. And that's kind of the same thing with Endless Ocean. Those series are really easy to record and easy to edit and easy to post on YouTube. It's really relaxed. While these series usually go on, these episodes I mean, usually go on for like a week or two of work before I post a video of something I accomplish. So that's just why this might go on uh, a little bit slower than I did for a while. And if that's the case, I just wanted to tell you here so you don't be surprised. But don't worry, I do will not stop. And if I will stop for a while, I'll probably say it in an episode so you guys will know. But I still want to continue and I still have the love of Minecraft and all its things and the progress that we're doing and all the things that we're accomplishing. I want to continue. For the moment anyways. But I think that will be it for this episode of MDB's Minecraft Let's Play. Or our Minecraft Let's Play. Because it's mine and you guys's. And what the heck did I just do there? There we go. I, I jumped in the fishing farm. Oh, by the way, the other day, I jumped up here, and I didn't have torches here. There was a creeper, and he just about blew up, but I shot him with my bow, and I, I put torches since. That's an example to show you're never too safe, and I trapped myself here. Great. I need that, and that just ate my cobblestone. Ah, uh, can I do this? There we go. Logic of Minecraft, you go through the trap door like a boss. Anyways, I think that'll be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I brought you some enjoyment for today. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Maître Blocks.